The problem is too many Christians get to go out and they want to get saved, they get born again, but they don't have a foundation. Amen. They want to go be like other Christians, other evangelists, other pastors, because their role models in man and not in Christ. He was the perfect evangelist because he was a perfect God. He was holy, blameless, and sinless, so everything he did was holy, righteous, pure, true, and just. The problem is too many Christians get born again. I made a lot of those mistakes. I was going to go out and save the world. I thought everybody wanted a touch from God like I got. I thought everybody wanted to be saved and healed and set free from demons and alcohol and drugs and every other perversion known to man. I thought everybody wanted that. Well, guess what? I didn't want it the first 37 years either. So I found out they didn't want to know Jesus like I didn't want to know because they're under the assumption that God's a God of wrath and hate and all this other stuff and judgment when He came to save and to heal and not to condemn. See, so so many people have such a misconception out there of who Christ is and why He came. Everybody thinks He just came to save you. Oh, heck no. No, He came to make you a new creation. When somebody meets you, they should be the new creation, not your old self. Amen? That's how we're going to affect this world because you're going to walk in power. You're going to have a confidence inside of you that they don't have. I don't know how many Christians have told me, well, you're kind of arrogant and prideful. No, I, 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 my hope is in God. Hallelujah. I have no good in me but God. Yeah. Once you learn that, they know that. They take it as arrogance and pride and stuff. No, it's not. <coughs> I have confidence in Christ, the hope of glory who lives yeah. in me. Yeah. See, it's not arrogant, but I'm, I know Him. Yeah. I've met Him. So when they meet you, they should be meeting Jesus. Not your old self anymore because that person is supposed to be dead. So if you go out into the world, too many people get ahead of God's plan. Oh, oh see? Yeah, it got quiet, didn't it? Because if you get ahead of His time frame, that's where the mistakes happen. You know why a lot of people go out into the mission field and fail miserably or die? Because they went, first of all, where they weren't called. They made their own calling. Amen. They didn't wait on the Holy Spirit to teach them what their calling is and what their election is. So if you you have to go through preparation first. I mean, I'm at this over 29 years and I'm still a work in progress. I don't know about the rest of you. Well, Earl's not, but he's, he came out like that too. He's okay to go. So, but that's why we looked Earl. Amen. <laughs> No pressure though, brother. No, I'm not putting any pressure on you. You don't need to go there. Proverbs 29, this is where the Lord, when you sit with Him, and He started giving me a message Thursday morning, actually Wednesday night when I went home, and during, through the day, and then when I really sit down to start typing out some of the notes and cross-references, He changes the whole thing for a reason. Yeah. Don't fight when God changes something in you or Amen. changes your plans because He's got something better. Amen. See, as He changed all my notes and studies, it made a lot of sense. Because so many people go out to witness, but they don't have a game plan. They don't have a foundation. They don't have their vision from God for their life. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 29, 18, in the King James Version, it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. See, I got a vision. I got dreams and visions when I first got saved. After so many years, you kind of just put them aside go, did I miss something? Sometimes you do. Did God, did I hear right? Did I see right? Was that your voice then? So was that vision from you or from the devil? Am I deceiving myself? The Bible says even the elect can be deceived, so don't think you can't be, because unless you're keeping it the law, what that means keeping His word. The law in the Old Testament meant the Word of God. Okay, so unless you're in that Word, you won't. You know how you get a vision? Study the, study the Word. Yes. In Hebrews 3, 1 through 2, it says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to Him who appointed Him, as Moses was also faithful to His house. Who appointed Jesus the Father? The what? The heavenly calling. You're a partaker. Psalm 139, your heavenly calling was written out before there was a universe here. Yes. 
See, so if you get up and you're born again and you're not rooted and grounded in Christ and you're not hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, you're going to go out there and make your own calling. That's why the average life of a pastor is three and a half years because most of them shouldn't have been one. No, they, they, their heart was good. They wanted to do something noble and honorable before God. But unless God has called you to that, don't walk in it because you're going to fail miserably. God had to twist me every which way but loose and sideways for me to become a pastor because I knew the dangers of it. <laughs> no, I did You know, I was an assistant in California, seven and a half years in ministry, even when I went to Vegas. And when I came out here, and I saw what that did to other pastors. Yeah, I came alongside them. I taught Sunday school. I counseled. I did evangelism. But I watched what it did to their lives. I watched their phone ringing 24 hours a day. I watched them doing hospital visits. I was doing the same thing, but it wasn't on me. It was on them carrying the ministry. And if you're not spiritually built up and fortified in the Holy Ghost and strengthened, and it's not about you, so many people get into that position and they are not spiritually equipped. So don't be so anxious to go out into all the world and see the world saved until God calls you to your purpose your heavenly calling, your election by Christ. Amen. Remember something, unless you got an ear to hear what the Spirit would say, you're a lost soul. Amen. You're in your carnal man, and your carnal man cannot do anything that's going to please God. Never has, never will. He won't accept it. Amen. Because you did something of your own doing that you thought you was going to get God to love you and approve of you. You were approved in who? Christ. He approved of you when you came. Actually, he approved of you in the womb because you were made in his image and likeness. And he had a great plan. But we don't raise up the young ones that there's a great plan for their life, but they have to wait on God. We lead by example, children. They'll follow Christ as you follow Christ as a parent or a grandparent. They're going to look to you how you speak, how you walk, how you talk, if you're humble, or if you're just the opposite, if you're like your old nature. Kids are no dummies. They see, they know things. Amen? Amen. Connor, when's God coming back? You already said you knew when. He spoke to you. You said He's coming back in your lifetime, right? What are you looking at me for? Said, Connor, look at me. Look at me. See, they need to know this. You're helping all them today. You're a young man of God. God spoke to you. You're going to see His return in your lifetime, aren't you? He told you that. Ten years old, God spoke to him, heard his voice. My generation is going to see the coming of the Lord. There isn't a lot of time left, people. See, and I trust what Connor says. You know why? Because he's a spirit-filled, tongue-praying, shafar-blowing, laying hands on the sick, prophesying ten-year-old man of God. Amen. So, if God can speak to him like that, what's wrong with you adults in here? Sometimes we don't like what God is saying. Just sharing. Now that thing about the vision. Everybody's waiting for the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. You're going to be waiting a long time. You're going to be waiting until Jesus comes back. Joel, second chapter. Just verse 28. It's 28 to 32 because all this stuff is happening now. The signs, the wonders in the earth and in the heaven. There's fires. There's all this stuff is happening. But this quote in Joel has already happened. Yes. And in verse 28 in Joel 2 it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will. Now maybe, God doesn't do maybes. Pour out my spirit on how much? All flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see what? Visions. I will happen at Pentecost. Acts the second chapter. What happened to the dreamers and the visioners? The people with visions and dreams for God to do great things. Where are they today? See, I got a vision. And I'm telling you something, over the years, sometimes you do get tired. Sometimes you do get weary. Anybody says they don't get weary well doing, they're lying. We're going to do a truth test. No, because sometimes it wears you out. You know, you want to, God's given me such dreams and visions for the world. Billions of souls being saved. Entire nations turning to Jesus. 
He's shown me His heart for the world. And He showed it to all of us right here. All who call upon His name shall be saved. That's the Father's love for humanity. That's His heart for everybody. That everybody come to Jesus. Not some people. That's why you see all this racial divide in America. How sad it is when people got to put a color before what matters. Amen. There's no... I checked the book. When, people, when I was a young Christian, and there was some stuff going on, like the racial wars and the drug wars where I was living in West L.A., I said, there's no color in here. He said, no, you know why I don't mention it? Because I've never looked at the color of a man's skin or a woman's skin. I only look at what's in their heart. See, because in here it says, all who call upon His name. We're going to get to it later about making disciples of all nations. See, God's not a respecter of persons. All who come to Him, He's going to forgive, He's going to love, He's going to save, He's going to heal, He's going to bless you, He's going to restore you. Like I said, when you got saved, if we ever realized what you got when you got saved, we were talking about that in here lately, man, you changed the way you pray. You changed the way you talk. You would speak the promises of God and you would receive them by faith. Not by any of your works, because your works can't amount to anything. Amen? Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Been in the office a long time. I'm preaching myself. <laughs> he let me out today. <laughs> you got your Bibles. Go to Isaiah 54, verses 2 and 3. When we were in here the other night, the word of the Lord came to us about God spreading us out. And what triggered today's sermon was that letter and the notes and the, and the phone call from these ministries that called me. It reignited a fire in me to go to the world. Once we get proof saved and delivered, we'll take it from there. Amen? Amen? So it's so important that we see today that you limit God and what He can do with you if you can't see a bigger vision. Right. And what happened in the last six weeks with these phone calls, these letters from these ministries, from regional matters of these ministries to call me, I'm like... I'm just a guy in Perum. <laughs> God says you're a lot more than that, so all of you. Amen. Amen. See, because if they're calling me, they're calling you, because you're the one helping support all that. Amen. 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 So we are reaching the world, but when, but when it came the word of the Lord Friday night, the wind is coming, the hammer is coming, which is God's word. The word He gave us was enlarging our tents, and it says this, this speaking to Israel, is, it's a continual growing. See, the word multiplies. God gave that word when I was first saved. He says, when you lead one person to the Lord, do you realize that could lead to thousands? Because they get saved, then they tell somebody. They get saved, they tell somebody. God showed me when I was in California, all the people that He saved, He said, it's, it, the, the number's so high, what I did through you already, and that's just the beginning. My first spiritual son, the place I was working, his wife got saved. His three kids got saved. Their friends got saved. They used to go out to heaven one Saturday a month and do Bible studies in their house. That whole house turned into a ministry center. One Saturday I went out there and said, your work is finished here. He says, do you realize that first salvation turned into thousands and thousands and thousands of salvations? People in the ministry, they're serving me, they're doing, and they're, they helped raise up ministers in that whole town, and then they left there and raised up more ministers. So never think that your seed planting doesn't grow a harvest. You may not see it, but that first spiritual son bore thousands and thousands of salvations and is still multiplying. See, so your work and labor of loving the Lord is never for vain. Never, never, never is it in vain. Because God, don't think just because you planted and you don't see the fruit come right away. Guess what? It's coming. Yes. We plant, we water, but God brings the increase. It says that in Corinthians. Amen? So never be discouraged. Be encouraged and never rejecting you. They reject the truth. So know that you know, it says in Isaiah, enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right, to the left. And you watch this. Your descendants will inherit the nations and make desolate cities inhabited. What do we bring the kingdom of life to people? See, it's going to affect your children, your grandchildren. See, he's talking to Israel how they're going to keep growing and multiplying. How much more under the blood of the new covenant? 
Yeah. See, so where you go, you can bring a dead city life. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep speaking life into this town. Yes. The life of Christ. We're to bring the kingdom. The kingdom's in us. Amen? Mm -hmm. Your kingdom children. You're bringing the life of Jesus, the life of hope to people. You're bringing salvation and healing and wholeness to people. You're bringing a hope that's eternal to people. See, we can take desolate, and when I was reached early in this morning, when I was making chili this morning, and I was praying, I'm just worshiping the Lord. He says, let me tell you something. He says, the more my church starts speaking what I'm saying through you, the more I'm going to do. God's going to react to your faith, not His. Well, got quiet, God, John. You see that? God's going to react to your faith what you believe. If you don't believe sitting here this morning that you're going to be satisfied with a long life, that you're going to prosper in all things, even under your health, even as your soul prospers, if you don't believe that, God's not even obligated to honor it. If we speak against the Word, the Word's not going to manifest. But we're in a day and age of telling you something. You need to have faith in the power of His Word and that He is able and willing and wants to perform it. It's His desire to see Himself glorified in all that you say and do. So the church needs to go back to faith people. And I don't mean faith the stuff. Don't go there with me. <laughs> stuff is good. You came in this world with nothing that says you go out. Amen. You know what the stuff is? That's stuff that comes with your salvation. Yeah. Everything you're ever going to need, every blessing you're ever going to need, right. spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, yeah. your inheritance is everything. Hallelujah. So stuff should never be the focus of your life. Jesus should. And if Jesus is your focus, He'll trust you with plenty of stuff so you can go bless somebody else. The church should be giving away houses to people that can't afford it. We should have entire Christian communities with affordable housing and apartments so people can get a start in life. We should be running the school system, not Satan. Amen? Yes. Oh, Lord Jesus, come. Shake this planet today, Lord. We need you so bad. When I say... It, it, now watch, it gets so much better when He expands things. He, when He stretches you out. Too many people try to go pitch their own tent. Self-effort. Self-motivation. You better be spiritually motivated or you're going to be in a whole lot of trouble. Amen? Because God created the earth. God's the one that's building this ministry. God's the one that spoke, let there be light. God said, let the waters be separated with the continents. I watch those planet and all the nature shows. And I'm just in awe of God. I just watch them. All these shows that have become... The filming that they do on these... How they got these cameras down in the oceans and in these jungles and places we can't even go, I don't know. But they did. But when they start talking, sometimes you have to mute. Yeah. <laughs> when you start telling me this one made it with this one, and this one made that one, and this one evolved into this one, okay, it's mute time. I'll just watch without the sound and worship Jesus. Amen? I know who created all this. I know in Genesis, the first chapter, it says He created the birds, the animals on land, and the fish in the sea, and man from dust of the earth. I know who made everything. Amen? Amen. In a, now, when I tell you God wants to expand your tents, it's His tent to expand. you just got to be willing to be expanded. Yeah. We don't like getting stretched. <laughs> well, Maria don't mind, but the rest of it. In Isaiah 40, 22, you don't need to go there. This is, God gave me this verse a long time ago. That's why I use it. It's got such power in it. When, you, when I look at the enormity of God, we still don't know how big He is. We don't really know the enormous power he has and knowledge he has. What we're learning. Isaiah 40, 22 says, It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Oh. Now, when it says, I'm going to expand your tents, let him take the stakes. Let him do the stretching. Yes. Yes. If he can stretch the heaven, when I was coming up basin this morning, come towards 160, I look at those clouds. One of my other favorite verses is Nahum 1 3. The clouds are the dust beneath his feet. Oh, yeah. And it was like I was looking at those clouds, they're not even a stepping stone for God. <laughs> he stretches out the heavens that we can't measure. We haven't no more, we don't know how many universes are out there. 
they're still finding stuff with their little telescopes and stuff. <laughs> Too bad they didn't have the eye of the spirit to see the creator in it. Amen. And, but you do. See, you can see these things through the eye of the Holy Ghost. Yes. So when I was watching some nature shows, took a break from the sermon yesterday, I'm looking at that and I'm going, wait, that... Where did you come up with all this, anyway? He never answered. He yeah, never answered. And then we went on and watched something else. And then I went to the office. I came back out. It was on the nature show again. And they had these fish that were deep down with these colors that are illumined in total darkness. And I went, it's dark down there. He goes, and the only thing he said for the rest of the day, I am God. Amen. The conversation ended. He cut me off right there. I said, okay, I got nothing else to say. <laughs> Obviously, it's time to go back in the office and work on the sermon. See what I'm saying? We serve such an enormous, powerful yeah. God. You're one with Him. That power is in the church. Yeah. Now we don't speak it. That's why you got to get angry at the devil. I've been angry the last three days. Especially seeing that my honey's not home. <laughs> we don't do well with heart. We're so used to being like that, it's, you, you kind of get one after 19 and a half years. I mean, we, we get the same prayers. We have the same heartbeat in Christ. And you don't realize how much... That's why I tell you people, make the most of your life. The ones that are around you that you love and you care about, spend time with them. There's not a lot of time left. See, I was crying this week. I said, Lord, I'm married to the most beautiful, anointed, chosen woman you've ever made. I'm kind of partial. She's my wife. But I thank Him for that every day, that she's blossoming and growing more by day into the woman of God He's created. And you know what I'm seeing? She's blossoming more by day into the woman of God He created. And you know why? Because I speak that I'm married Amen. to God's best. Amen. He promised me before I got married, when I swore I'd never get married. So I'm never getting married. And he said, we'll see about that. <laughs> see how my words had a little effect on God? So, He said, but if you wait, I will bring you my best. I know who will walk with you and who will be one with you. So many Christians today, like I said, I know a lot in this town. They wanted me to marry them. They want me to counsel them. I'm going, you never should have been together. You got together for the wrong reasons, not for Christ reasons. See, we knew each other spiritually for over five years on the phone. So we were spiritually connected as one unit before we even met each other eye to eye. There was no physical contact until she got off the plane and I almost ran out of the airport. <laughs> I've never been afraid of anything. This woman was walking down a ramp. I was like, I'm out of here. Here's the roses, body. Just saying. Mark 16. And God's got a sense of humor. He got me good. I thank Him every day for it. You thank Him every day for it. You know what we need to start thanking God for? The gift of life. That's right. We take life for granted. See, this week with her being gone, it made me real. I just saw a lot spiritually. God gave me a lot of revelation knowledge where He's taking us, these phone calls, where the ministry's going to grow, how it's growing, how He's building the house, the great and mighty exploits He's going to do in us and through us for His glorious purposes. So with her gone, it really made me really focused on the Lord. So when that happened, it was so, it was a blessing and it hurt in the same time because we're so used to being stuck together like that. But it made me focus more on Him this week than ever before. But it made me appreciate her more than ever before. Yes, amen. Amen. Yeah. You learn to appreciate the gifts that God gives you. Amen? In Mark 16, now remember something. Let me go back to Isaiah 40, 22. When, when I showed you his power, his plans, how he builds your tent, if you get out ahead of God, in Philippians, I made a note earlier this morning, I was like 530, 1 6, God is faithful to complete that which he's begun in you. Right. Yeah. Remember the plans in 139 that he wrote out before for your life before the world. Unless you allow him to build your life yeah. and to prepare you and to get you ready, you're gonna miss what he has for you. Yeah. So many Christians miss out because they think they can go out and instruct God. Can't do it. I mean, I've gone to God. You don't need my counsel. What's up with that? Well, we've been through together. You don't need help from me? No, just do what you're told. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and after 29 years, you learn to do what you're told. Amen? Amen. 
Mark 16. See, when God says go out ye into all the world, He's got to equip you first. Like you said before, if you're not leaning and living in the Spirit and on it, for guidance, for direction, for wisdom, for discernment of spirits, you're going to get yourself in trouble out here unless you can see through God's eyes. God lives in you, amen? amen. Mark 16. When I tell people they want to know their calling, it's right here. See, we all have a heavenly calling, and it's the same one. Different offices in the ministry is fine, but we all have the same calling. 14 to 18, when Jesus showed up, he goes, later he appeared to the 11, Mark 16, 14 to 18, he appeared to the 11 as they sat at the table, and watch what he does to them. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. It wasn't, hi, I love you. <coughs> because what? Their unbelief and hardness of heart. <coughs> Too many Christians have a hard heart and unbelief. That's why God can't do much with them. Because they did not believe those who had seen Him after He had risen. See, test things up. It says, test the spirits whether they're of God or not. In 1 John, 5th chapter, right? 4th chapter. Test the spirits. Well, when somebody shares something about God with you, test it. Whether it bears witness or not, they may be giving you a gem. They may be giving you some food about God you didn't know before. Yeah. Remember, we pray in part, we prophesy in part, we know in part, but when we come together, it makes a whole meal. Yeah. Amen? That's why everybody, everybody in this house, if you're a part of this ministry, God's going to use you. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're here for you, you're in the wrong house. Yeah. We're here for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. All those songs were so beautiful today because it was about everything was about praising Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I love you, Lord. Yeah. Everything was about Jesus. Uh, uh, and that's where our life must be. Yeah. When you meet people and your life is about Jesus, they're going to know. You're not an old sinner, but you're a saint of God in Christ. You've been redeemed. Yeah. You've been changed. Yeah. Amen. yeah. Amen. They're going to know just by your very presence. Remember, we have that aroma of Christ in us. Yes. Woo! Oh, Jesus. Preaching myself out here. <laughs> because they did not believe. And he said to them, Go into where? All the world and do what? Preach the gospel to every creature. There's some creatures out there. We'll leave that alone. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. You leave the condemning part up to God. You hear me? Amen. That's not your job. Amen. Yeah, I didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world through me. That's why He sent His Son. Amen. They already feel condemned. Don't add to their sorrow. And these signs, what? Will. It doesn't say maybe, does it? will follow those who do what? Believe. Believe. Thank you. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they what? They shall will, become. will, yeah. shall happen. Yes. See, that's your heavenly calling. Yes. That's your heavenly calling. <laughs> yes, friend, you? Told him. <laughs> like I said, there's creatures in the world. <laughs> See, it doesn't, the vision, the vision has to be way beyond you. Yes. If you've gotten a vision you think is from God and you go out and do it by yourself, God didn't give it to you, the devil did. Amen. Amen. That's right. If you have a vision for what God wants to do with you on this earth, and you can just leave here today and go do it and accomplish it, and you got it, God didn't give it to you. You did. Amen. That's works of the flesh. I'm going to go do. Did you ask God? It's amazing how many people won't answer me. I think God wants me to do that. If God doesn't make you think. He'll tell you. He'll That's speak right. loud and clear. There's no questions. And if you're questioning something, get on your knees and say, Holy Spirit, help me to discern what I'm hearing. Amen. See, when you get a vision, make sure you take it right back to the one you think it came from. Amen. There's so many people deceived out there think God told them this, that, and the other thing, and know it was the devil. Because it, because it becomes all about their vision. No, God had a plan for my life. The vision I have is the vision He gave me. That's His vision to fulfill through me. I don't do this on my own. And like I said, I told people, I said, they tell me what they, what they think God told them to do, and God didn't tell you that. They go, why? It doesn't line up with the book. Amen. Amen. God's vision is in here. We just read it. Mark 16. 
Isaiah 43.10, you will be my witnesses. That's your heavenly calling to be a witness for Christ. See, it's actually very simple. People want to make something that's not there. The gospel is simple with God in Christ when you see the basics of what we're all called to, not some of us. Yes. This is everybody who, what? Believes. Yes. See, if you go out and you pray for somebody that's sick and you say, well, if it's God's will, please don't pray for that's them. That's right, that's right. You just curse the person. I'm yes. sorry you did. Uh -huh. yes. God's will is that every one of you is healed and whole and yes. with God in Christ. Yes. God's will is in the book. John came in here this morning, the devil attacked his hand, he couldn't even play his guitar. We anointed both hands. Guess what? We worshiped today, didn't we? Yes. Yes. The devil was attacking Deborah's throat. We prayed over everybody. You stopped and we prayed. Amen. We stopped all that nonsense in the name of Jesus yes. Yes. and we worshiped. Amen. The devil loves to attack worship. Okay, That's but guess right. what? He can't stop it. That's right. Because we took our stand in who we are in here this morning. We got the anointing oil out. We pray and they shall be healed. Amen. Not may be. Amen. See, because I believe when I pray, it's going to happen. I prayed for people that didn't get better. And they said, what happened? I said, I believe. We got quiet just died. They can nullify your prayers. But I always pray in faith because I know God's will. I read this book every day. The more I read it, the more I know God's will. The more I read it, the more I think like He does. The more I see myself. See, i got a vision of doing such with God doing great things through me. I have a vision of that. I have a vision of these scriptures because as a young Christian, He took me up in the Spirit and showed me the great exploits He wanted to do in me and through me. But he said, it's not for you, but you tell them what I want to do for you. And they're going to mock you. They're going to make fun of you. Da, 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 and he said, do not listen to them. Amen. They didn't create you. They didn't ordain you. I did. Amen. I ordained you a prophet to the nations before there was a day on this earth, before I formed you in your mother's womb, Jeremiah 1. She had a plan. And I'm telling you something, these phone calls I've gotten, these letters I've gotten, the encouragement I've gotten from these other ministers lately, let me tell you something, I've got a fire burning in me. It's reawakened my desire to see this world saved like I've never known. Amen. God had me so far to a place to where you just sit before me and you get quiet and go, is there any hope for me? And then he goes, boom, boom, boom. Three phone calls changed it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. See, I think God let me get to the bottom of myself if you really want to know the truth. So there was no more hope in me. See, we don't like giving up hope in ourselves. We are geared as humans to go out and do it. God's going to do it. When we prayed for John, God touched him this morning. I just prayed in faith that it be healed. When we prayed for Paul to get new bones in his toe, I didn't do that. God said, go put your hands on his foot and pray for new bones. Forget this stuff. They're not going to put any joints or bones or anything else in there. I am going to heal. God says he'll restore everything that was taken from you. Yes, like I said, I don't care if it's a new lung. I don't care if it's a new kidney. I don't care if you need new ears. I don't care if you need new eyes. It's just body parts. God made those parts. And he's got plenty of parts in heaven to give you a new one. Amen? Amen. I got new kidneys. I got a new liver. I got new lungs. I got a new heart. You're talking about a guy that needed surgery? Oh, Jesus. I'm just saying, we just sang the man that did it. I'm a living, breathing testimony that God will give you new body parts. Because this thing was... Let me that a little. I'm brand new right now. I'm brand new right now. And so should all of you be. Amen? Woo, Jesus. I feel pretty good today. That's a lot. When I say everybody has the same calling, and in one respect we all do, like I said, Isaiah 4, you're called to be a witness of who Christ is. You're His representation here. You're the extension of the kingdom of God. Everywhere you go, you take the kingdom with you and the power of it, the authority of it, the dominion of it. Remember what Adam and Eve lost, you've gotten back. We need to start learning to speak to nature and stuff. Amen? Amen. I told you that there was a fire across from the next street three weeks ago from our house. And I'll tell you what, I went home and that fire was going right towards his house. It's a big house. And I saw the flames, the smoke was coming into Joe's backyard across the street from me and towards my house when I pulled in. I'm telling you, church, I got out and I prayed that the wind changed. Amen. Amen. That's right. Because it was going right for this man's house. It already took up the whole all the trees on the street. It already took up one of his cars. And it was heading. And I got out. 
I went in the name of Jesus. That wind is going to shift. And I stood there for a couple minutes and I prayed and the wind went right away from his house. So don't tell me. See, God has a covenant in Jeremiah with what? Nature. So if he can speak to nature, why can't you? Now that was God's timing. I was getting home from the store because I saw a smoke. You always see smoke in this valley. But as I'm going down base, I said, uh, that's not further out like I thought. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm coming down base and that smoke's getting a lot closer. I make a ride onto David Street and I went, oh, Houston, we got an issue. <laughs> and then I saw all the cars going down the street before mine. But I pulled right in the driveway, got out, and I prayed. And let me tell you something. That wind changed direction. It was heading right for that man's house. God is faithful. Don't think that you don't have that power. Don't think that you don't have that power. Yes, you do. If God's got a covenant with nature and you're in covenant with God, then you have the same covenant power God has. Amen? Oh, Jesus. Oh, God's so good. Romans 10, 14 and 15. Remember something? Every one of you is called and chosen to represent God. To be a testimony to who Christ is. Remember something? Don't give a testimony. Give Him Jesus. Amen. He's your testimony. He's Lord, God, Savior, Healer, Provider, Protector, Deliverer, Redeemer, Justifier. He's your all in all. Man is not. Like I said, Jesus is my testimony. If we could save ourselves by burning animals, we'd still be doing it. But Jesus was the last sacrifice. Praise you, Lord. Romans 10. See, this is when you want to know your calling, your heavenly calling, your election. It's right here. This is not for a select few, this Bible verse. In Romans 10 it says, How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? <clears throat> As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of what? Good things. See, when Paul was writing here, he was talking about how many in Israel rejected Jesus. Remember something, when you go out and you're sharing Jesus, you are never going to be rejected. You know that's why a lot of Christians don't witness? Well, they said something nasty to me. Yeah, and with that thin skinned in this world, God, you need help. People are offended by the color of your clothes anymore. It is so sad what we've allowed society to become. It's so sad that Americans for so long have listened to politicians and put people in office that the only place they should be is a prison cell and not on the streets running the government. And I don't say that in a judgmental way. It's the country's fault for being so blind to darkness and allowing it to exist. Amen? And it's time. Somebody I talked to the other day, they went somewhere and they said, their ministry doesn't even talk about politics or anything else. They don't encourage people to vote and all this other stuff. So I'm listening to this. I'm going, what? Well, they said they're really not allowed to speak about politics. Yeah, well, uh, let me tell you something. I got all the authority I ever need right here. As of what, what saint, so do you. People are trying to muzzle the church. They're trying to muzzle really the truth of God. The truth will set you free. But well, I'll be honest with you, the church grew silent after Lyndon Johnson, he added on to the 5013C, they're worried about losing their tax exemption and everything else. Really? My God can't take care of me without that? You've got to be kidding. Come on, you've got to be kidding. Uh, let me tell you something. My God says you're going to have an abundance and not a lack. My God says I'll supply all that you need. My God says don't have any fear of man for it will bring a snare to you. So when you get up here, or you're not witnessing to somebody, don't fear any man, don't fear any woman, because let me tell you something, you belong to another. You belong to another. God is omnipresent. Wherever you go, He's with you, and He will protect you from all evil if you believe it. Are you going to get attacked for your faith? Sure you are. No persecution seasons your, seasons your spirit man will bet. <laughs> they don't hate you. They hate Him. You always must remember to be effective out in this world, the darkness. Because our poor youth is so deceived. We have a younger generation today in this world. I'm talking under 50. Um, 
They have been so deceived, though. They have. They have no moral compass. You know where they learn that? In college and in the schools. My wife does some clients, and they're a lot of Christians. Some of them would come out from Vegas still to get their hair done. They sent their kids to college. Three years later, there's no God. These are born-again kids, raised in a godly house, going to church, singing worship, going to Bible studies, a couple of years in a university, and they don't even believe there is a God. So next time you want to send your kids somewhere, your grandkids somewhere, you better know where you're sending them. Yes, amen. You know every big university in this country, you know how it started? A seminary school. Right. Do you realize that? Yeah. Now they're agents of Satan. We need to pray for change in this country. Amen. But until the church gets up and makes its voice heard, amen. God never would have been thrown out of the classroom if the church stood up and said, amen. no, you're not. Yeah. The church allowed it. The church allowed it. And look at our country now. But you know what? We're being born again. There's going to be some birth pangs in this nation. God was showing me last night, I love America. I made America. As long as you stand with Israel, and there's people in this country crying out to me for repentance and godly sorrow, and that believe that I'm going to restore this nation to a bright light in the world, a beacon of hope to people, when a church gets on its face and prays and fasts before me, then I will heal the land. I will not hear the heathen, but when my church repents, then I will honor their prayers. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Now, when God sends you out to preach, don't go there, Luke 24. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are what? Endued with power from on high. Remember something. Preparation for serving God is everything. David got anointed king. The next 13 years, Saul tried to kill him. He just anointed me king. Here's this guy chasing me in and out of the mountain caves trying to kill him. See, there's a preparation time that goes on. As you mature in Christ, as you become less, He becomes more. See, if you want to be like Jesus, did you become like Him when you got saved? Yeah. But there's junk in your trunk. He's got to clean out the attic. Amen. All that stuff you got stored up inside of you has to come out. It didn't come out the day you got saved. I thought it did. Boy, was I deceived. You talk about an immature Christian? Boy, was I one. I was so naive, I just thought I had it all together the day after I got saved. <laughs> and then reality set in, church. Yes. And then the purging started. The yes. cleansing started. All the stuff for the past 37 years that were put into this thing that I used to be. Guess what? It took time to get that out because some of it don't come out so easy. Right. But all of you have let go of everything in the past easy, right? Yes. Oh, look at what perfect saints in this house. Can you see that? Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is where he threw me, changed the whole closing for today. Luke 14. <clears throat> God wants to show you the importance of him preparing you for what he wants to do with you. See, we don't wait on the Lord. Even that word wait is wrong, it means to serve. We have to serve. But when God has you, you think it's a dead time, it's not. It's a preparation time to become more like him, to spiritually equip. So it's so important that when, <clears throat> God, where are you? What's taking so long? It's taking so long because you're grumbling. <laughs> now, Fran's never grumbled, but the rest of us, it's... She was going, he's meddling. <laughs> he's meddling. <Fran. laughs> In Luke 14, 27 to 31, it's so important that you allow God to be your builder. It says in Hebrews, he's the builder of yours house. Amen? Yeah. Watch what it says in Luke. And Jesus is talking to them. And He says, Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Remember, you've got to deny yourself. And remember something. Does not bear his cross. That's your heavenly calling, by the way. That's your vision. See, people, when he says pick up your cross, not somebody else's. Amen. That cross right there means your heavenly calling. Your vision that God's given you for your life that you need to focus on. Most people miss their vision because they're worried about pleasing people and doing what other people want them to do instead of what God wants you to do. None of you have done that. Praise God. And come after me. 
For which of you, now watch this, intending to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost. Whether he has enough to finish at least after he has laid the foundation, that's that preparation season that God takes you through, and is not able to finish. All who see will begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes out against him with 20,000. <coughs> In Korea, uh, Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Matthew 7, are you built on the rock or on sand? Amen. See that foundation, there's only one foundation, that's the Word of God, the rock. And I'm telling you something, he, if He doesn't build you a solid foundation first, before you go out to try and do what God's shown you to do, if you don't sit with Him and be taught by the Spirit, who you are, the Word, and you're not endued with that power, you know what you're going to do? You're going to crash and burn. A lot of people don't go through the preparation season like David did. First of all, he's being prepared as a kid out in the field killing bears and lions and everything else and keeping the, the flock safe. So when he got anointed king, he was already prepared to be king, but then he went through 13 years of somebody trying to kill him. <laughs> so, if you're not willing to God give you a solid foundation, then you will not fulfill your vision. There's only one foundation that can't be moved. That's the rock of creation and salvation. There is no other foundation to stand upon which can stand against the storms of life. That's why it says those who are built on the rock, when the storms come, it says when they come. Did you read the scriptures? They all leave that out. Oh, I'm built on the rock. A storm comes, they run down the street. Oh my God, what happened? God forgot me. No, He didn't. You weren't built. You weren't built to withstand the storm. It says when they come. When the testing of your faith comes. Peter says, don't think it's strange when the testing of your faith comes with those fiery trials as though some strange thing were happening. It says, when they come. It's to burn you up so what's left is Jesus. Amen. Because nothing can move Him. We receive the kingdom who is Christ in us which cannot be shaken and never brought down because it rose up over this whole earth. He walks on those clouds. This earth is His footstool, so it should be yours also. Yeah. You should see this earth as a footstool. He's already given the earth unto men. It's already yours. Stop trying to get something that's already yours. You already inherited it. Amen? Yeah. We'll finish with Acts 10 here real quick. Just 34 to 38. Everybody knows this story. Peter and Cornelius' house. How the Holy Ghost fell on them. They, you notice? They didn't even say, they didn't even do the Lord's salvation prayer. As he was preaching, they got filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. See the power of your words? Yes. When you speak the Word of God with authority, the Spirit will do it, not you. Amen. It says, not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Acts 10, 34-38. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. See, none to anybody. To him, everybody's the same. He wants everybody saved. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is what? Lord of all. That the word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached, that was just water, that was just repentance. <clears throat> Where was the Galilee baptism? John preached. How God, what? Anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with what? Power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Isaiah 61. That same anointing that came down to baptize Jesus when John baptized him is what's in you. To do what? Go around and heal all who were oppressed by the devil. Remember, infirmity is never from God. It's from the devil. Right, amen. What did Jesus say? This woman who's been bound for 18 long years, should she not be set free from this infirmity? Rebuke the infirmity. Infirmity is a spirit. Uh -huh. Remember something. Next time something tries to stick to your body, you speak to the infirmity. You don't even got to call by the infirmity. You're all free to go back to hell in Jesus' name. That's right. Amen. Because it don't belong on you. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. See, now... If you're like Jesus is, which you are, it says, as He is, so are you in this world. 1 John, right? I think it's 4.17, 5.17, one of those. It's in the book. 
if you're just like Jesus, what are you supposed to be doing? <coughs> Go ye into all the world. Yes. And heal all who are sick. Yes. Heal all who are sick. Yes. Casting out infirmity. He's casting out a spirit. Yes. See, it's amazing how Jesus made it so simple. But we got all these other fancy prayers and stuff. No, speak to the thing and tell it to get lost in Jesus' name. I don't care if it's a short arm. I don't care if they need a new ear on the side of their head. Speak to it. It'll come back. It'll, it has to obey. It has to obey. In the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, silver and gold I have not, but what I give to you, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And that was arise and walk. That was a man that had no legs. They were just little bones. He had been lame from birth. He jumped up and danced into the temple. Boy, did that start an uproar. Oh, Jesus. They came and put the men in prison for speaking it. <laughs> I believe you speak the word of God, they're going to want to put you in prison. That's right. Remember something. Matthew 28, 16, the Great Commission. Jesus says, I am low with you always, even to the end of the age. The greater works that we're going to do, John 14, 12. Church, it's time that you be aggressive in your walk with God. Not foolish. Be wise. God says, make wisdom your dearest friend. Whatever changes God's making in your life, allow them to happen by the Spirit. Remember something, when God starts to mold you, it gets uncomfortable. I mean, never for Melissa, she came out, just, she got all together. She just submits every day, it's a piece of cake. She just got it. But the thing is, you no, know, but see, we should laugh. Because it shows you, when you can laugh, you know how much you need Jesus. We can't do anything right without Him. Like I said, but I know who lives in me. And like I said, this week of just being alone with the Lord like that in the house, it helped me a lot. He made changes in me. So now I look forward to my wife coming back because there's been some changes happening inside of me. She'll have a better husband when she gets home. So it's, but it's important. See what I'm saying? I asked Him to change me. I asked Him to. You know what He's done? He changes us. Yes. Yeah. Don't be afraid of the change. You know why? Because you'll have so much more peace in your heart and in your soul. There's only one that loves you completely and perfectly. Jesus. There's only one that knows how you've been hurt and damaged in your heart and soul. There's only one. And only He alone can fix this. People go to these self-help classes. They go to these counseling sessions and everything else. Uh, so they make themselves feel better. No, they need to be changed from their stinking thinking usually. Because they've judged themselves. And they're trying to make these drastic changes in their life. If you could make changes or save yourself, you'd have done it all by yourself and you wouldn't have ever needed Jesus. Amen? Amen? Like I said, the world teaches us to be independent. He teaches us to be codependent. Never be codependent on people. You be codependent on God, Jesus, because He'll never fail you. So, we're in a day and age, I'm telling you, church, there's a fire burning today. This is something going on. Hallelujah. You get to a point where you're sick of the darkness in your, in your city, in this country, and in the world. When I see people in here hurting physically, man, my anger comes up, not against people, but against the devil. Yes. God doesn't, what does He say? I know the plans I have for you. He plans the Lord, plans to prosper you, and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Yes. There's God's plans for you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, church, you're going to expand your visionary eyes when you allow the Spirit to show you greater things. Yes. See, I meditate on what Jesus did a lot, and I see it happening. And I'm meditating on it more now than ever because I know the days where people need to see evidence that Jesus is alive, Amen. and that He's saving, that He's healing, that He's casting out demons, and He does it through us. Amen? Amen. So the Great Commission is your calling. It's your heavenly calling. There is no other calling in, in this world. I'm sorry, you've got to accomplish all you want in the world, but you don't take that to heaven again. Right. Only the work of the Spirit that gets done with you gets you your crowns in heaven. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I long for heaven. Yeah. But what I long for first is to fulfill and finish my race here on this earth. Because lately God's reignited something in me that kind of got dormant for a few years. I kind of got discouraged.
It takes its toll some days in life. It took its toll on my marriage. I won't let that happen again. The devil's not welcome. He's not welcome in this ministry. He's not welcome in my marriage. He's not welcome. And lately God put a fire in me to get angry again. Not at people. Not at people. Please do not be angry even at these politicians. Yeah, they're doing pure evil. They've been doing it for so long they don't know the light is coming. They don't know the wind of change is coming. They don't know the hammer is coming. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't know it. In the days of Noah mocked God, they all were mocking God. Well, guess what? The word came. The hammer came. So please, from now on, when you're praying for this country, when you're praying for this city, when you're praying for the church, do not be angry with people. Be angry with the enemy of your peace and of your soul. The one that tried to kill you, who knows how many times God protected you before you got saved. I can't even imagine the thousands of times He protected me. I, I, don't even bother. I just thank Him that I'm saved. Amen. Lord, I could just say thank you for the next 24 hours, 7 days a week till you come get me. There's still not enough thank yous. Amen. Okay? You haven't missed anything. You're right on time, church. Amen. You know why I know you're right on time? Because you're here this morning. Amen. The Spirit of God brought you here. Amen. So we can not only fellowship and worship in word and in food, because coming together, this is what the church is to look like. We worship. We pray for one another. We pray for healing. We pray for the sick. We pray for the nation. We worship God in song and worship and praise. And then we have the Word of God that enriches us, the seed that goes into our heart to grow in there. Church, it's time for you to really be hungry again for the kingdom and His righteousness and His ways. Because when you hunger for Him, your life will change. You need to start seeing things. Go back and start reading all of God's miracles. See the things He does and then see Him doing it through you. Amen. That one with the withered arm, that's one of my favorite stories. God showed me that in a vision when I was a young Christian. That thing was just a stub. It was just a little bone sticking out. He said, stretch out your arm and the whole arm came out right in front of everybody. Then he tried to kill him. Where's the love? Because he broke their taboos, he did something on the Sabbath. Did it on the Sabbath. Remember something. There's no more works than the Spirit of the Lord. Church, you got a choice to make today? you got a choice. Are you going to let God stretch your tents? Yes. Are you going to let Him do more great things through you? Are you going to walk with your head held high knowing you shouldn't even be there, but God brought you there? Amen. Are you going to walk into heavenly places with Jesus and all power and dominion and authority? It's already yours. Are you going to pray His promises and expect to receive them all? Are you going to believe God for just regular stuff or the extraordinary? The out of this world stuff that only He can do. See, I can't do it. Because my vision is so big. The ones He's given me, I laughed when He gave them to me. I said, you've got to be showing this is for someone else. I know you're not showing it to this. He's reminded me of all the visions He gave me lately. So obviously I didn't miss it. Because I questioned myself lately. But it, you do. When you walk with God, you question yourself because He's going to call you to something. Like I said, church, you can't do it by yourself. I don't care how much knowledge you think you got, or how high your IQ is, you can't do the things of God in your intelligence. It's only by His Spirit in us. Amen? What a great day today. You guys are awesome saints. Amen? I'm you again. I celebrate your birthday today. See, he's 10 years old. I said it's time for him to get a job. You don't want no part of that. <laughs> I'm trying, Sean. I'm trying to get it. Just give me that work ethic. You know what I'm saying? The new mom can take it easy for a while. Praise God. <laughs> well, Father, as we come before you this morning, I thank you through the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge for everybody in this house. They're here because you called them here. You're here because you want to change them to be just like your holy son, Jesus. You want to give them a vision, not just for the city, but for the world, to see the world saved and set free. For the only thing Satan has, has is a lake of fire awaiting him. And you desire that there's not one soul on this planet that doesn't get the opportunity to know Jesus as both Lord and Savior of their lives. To be washed in the power of His blood and sealed with your most Holy Spirit. Endued with your power to do the great exploits that you've called us to do. Because it's not in our name that we go out into this world, but in your name. 
It is you, Jesus, that said, I, as the Father sent you, I am sending you, that's all of us, into this world. He is sending you all out into the streets of Pahrump and everywhere that you go to bring kingdom power and salvation and hope to a lost world. So, Father, I do thank you for dreams and visions in this house. And I also thank you to give them the interpretation of it, Lord. Because you're not the author of confusion, but you've given us love, power, and a sound mind. So, Lord, as I bless these awesome saints in here today, I thank you for this time of fellowship, because it's not over. We're about to fellowship and all this awesome food you've provided. And then, Lord, you put a blessing on this food that it nourishes and strengthens us, for we are the temples of God. I just pray everybody in here feel a refreshing, that fresh rain. That latter rain that's going to come down and refresh. Because you said when we water others, we will be rewatered. So I pray for some rewatering in here, refreshing in here. A wind of change in our hearts and our minds and thinking. So we see the things you see. We do the things you did. Father, I just pray a blessing upon everybody in here they can't contain in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen and amen. And amen. And amen and amen. God is good. Amen. We got enough dessert for the next month. Just close it, Gary. That's all you got to do. We'll stop.